Welcome back. A little more than one year ago, Empire officials broke ground on a $165 million expansion at the Riverton Power Plant. The plant will now have a heat recovery steam generator to help reduce emissions like carbon dioxide by at least 70% or more. In tonight's Sheer Science, we learn more about the combined cycle conversion project taking place right now at the plant. Back in 1950, this was the big thing. The Riverton power plant began in the early 1900s. Plant manager Ed Eason says by the 1950s, several turbines had been added to increase power production. The boilers would generate steam and they would go to uh, steam turbines that were installed in 1950 and 1954. We had two boilers in there that, uh, that we used to generate coal or natural gas, either they were capable of generating with either one. Eason explains to create electricity, you need a fuel like the coal previously used at the plant or the natural gas currently used. You heat up water and you make steam and then you do what they call superheat. And when you superheat, you're actually making that steam where you can't see it. You know, if you have a tea kettle, you see steam coming off, well, superheat, you actually take that and heat it past that point. On that same shaft is connected a generator. And then think of the generator as you have a rotor and a winding of wire through it. And the rotor is essentially a magnet. And as you cut that magnet through that wire, it makes electricity and then it goes out on the line for customers to use. But as with any piece of equipment, old age has taken its toll at the plant. So a new expansion is now in the works. Why was this project necessary for you? Well, the older units, they've reached their expected life, past their expected life. And these new units are more efficient. This unit here will be twice as efficient, about twice as efficient as the older units. In October of 2013, crews broke ground on a combined cycle conversion project rather than adding more units to the existing plant. With these units here, with the vintage of them, it just was not a economic, did not make economic sense to do that. Once this combined cycle project is complete, it will have an output of 250 megawatts enough to power 65,000 homes. Well, we bring in air through the air filter. It goes into, drops in, goes into the combustion turbine. We bring in a gas system through our filter gas and the gas in the air mix, it's ignited. It's like a jet engine and the gas expands and it goes through uh, four rows of blades and picks up energy and then that exhaust out of there goes into the stack and comes out. The heat recovery steam generator or HERSIG then captures the heat and superheats the steam. And it's like a radiator. They're fin tubes and because the exhaust gas is clean you can roll it you can put that in there and it can absorb the heat a lot better. Eason says the expansion is a way to keep the plant running in the southeast Kansas community while also meeting new emission standards. By keeping this here, we also keep the jobs that we had here before. We keep jobs here, we keep people working here, which is part of the economy of not only Riverton, but Galena and Baxter Springs is where these people live at. So next time you pass the Riverton power plant, just remember you saw it all on Sheer Science. The expansion is expected to be complete in June of 2016, and once finished, the power plant will be one of the most efficient ones in the nation.